Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So this is my current art journal spread, and today I'm gonna fill finish both of these pages. So I have this large space over here to fill. I am in my bedroom right now, and I will sketch this corner shelf. A lot of stuffies and some photographs on it. So I use very minimal art materials to work in my art journal. So basically, I draw with one or two waterproof fine liners because I need to use watercolors. The pens need to be water and fade proof. And then two water brushes, really convenient for painting watercolors. And my Etcher watercolor 24 color box. Let's get started. Okay, so even when we're staying at home, we can practice our urban sketching skills by sketching a simple setting like this, like, like a shelf with different kind of objects on it. So here I'm starting with the, with the top base of the shelf, okay? So when sketching something, it's really important to see the largest uh, framework first in the scenery. So in this scenery that I wanna sketch, is the uh, the shelf i started with the platform and then i started with the second largest thing on it the picture frame on the left hand side and connecting this little uh, toy here with the uh, picture frame and keep connecting more stuff around it this is a stuffy here from my friend These are the legs of the Mickey Mouse. So I'm just seeing simple geometric shapes instead of trying to draw what's really there. Pretty much everything in the world, like buildings, trees, and other urban subject matters are made of uh, simple geometric shapes, all piled together into a complex scenery. So when we're staying at home, there are a lot of opportunities. I'm sure we have a lot of stuff in our homes like this. Um, maybe in the kitchen or in your living room, your bedroom, you have a shelf with a lot of still life things on it. It's a great way to practice connecting different objects together, which is really essential for doing outdoor urban sketchings. As you can see, and keep connecting one thing after another, like doing a jigsaw puzzle. Not stressing out about the accuracy, but just focusing on the shapes that I see. Inside the shapes, there are details. So I focus on the larger forms first before I add further details inside. So these are my high school graduation photos. So sketching something like this at home is actually a really great experience, um, you know, about personal belongings and some family memories and stuff like that. It's a really great opportunity to both practice your skills and to kind of look back in time too. Okay, so now I'm drawing this first shelf over here, the frame, another frame below. These two lines are like perspective lines to show the dimension of the interior. And now I am adding these glass pig sculptures, just having fun drawing. So these glass pigs are actually really heavy. I'm not sure what they really are. I just got them from a friend. Maybe they're paperweights. They're really heavy. 
They're like solid glass. But they're really cute. Adding some patching for the shade inside and around the pigs. And for the next shelf below, I have more stuffies. Again, just drawing quickly and just focusing on the lines and shapes. Okay, so here is my finished line drawing. Now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. It's really fun to turn these things alive with colors. So I wetted the wall area first and applying a really light yellow ochre wash. The wall is not that solid dark. And then I'm painting here and there because those areas have the same colors, yellows, pink, and red. So it really saves time to paint this way instead of focusing on one thing at a time. It's much uh, easier to uh, paint all around areas, like areas with the same colors. So we don't have to go back to that color again by uh, washing, cleaning our brushes again. So finally, I need to add some shadows for the wall. So now we can tell the dimension of the, uh, the two walls much better. One is in slight shade. And here is my finished sketch. It's a really playful one, just having fun seeing all of, all of the cute shapes and painting the colors in. Okay, so I found these tomatoes in the fridge and I will sketch them in the last little space on my art journal spread right over here. So I kind of visualize the sizes and placement on the white space first before I start drawing. I'm going to start drawing the full tomato first, starting with the outline on the left hand side and connecting the stamps right on top. And then drawing the right hand side of the tomato, finishing the stamps. Now I'm drawing this half tomato, starting with the top shape. It's kind of like a squished heart shape. And then the bottom. And now I am drawing the rim of this half tomato. I'm using a lot of broken lines because organic stuff, um, they don't have very solid outlines. So it's really important to be loose and use a lot of broken lines to show the organic form. Drawing the seeds as I observe. So 
So now I'm using a thinner fine liner to draw the hatching lines to suggest the shade. The light source comes from the right hand side, so the shade is on the left hand side. Very simple hatching lines. So as always, I'm wetting the areas first with clear water before I start adding paint. First layer is kind of an orange red. First layer is always the lightest. Keeping this tiny swat there of the highlight, not painted. Painting very loosely with my brush. I'm not really going over the areas again and again because too much rubbing is going to make the colors lose its vibrancy. First layer is done. Now it's the second layer. It's a darker tone. This one is more of a red orange. It was more red or magenta mixed in. For the rim and the inside of the tomato. More diluted there. And for the third layer, for this half here, is the uh, even darker tone. It's a more of a purple red by mixing in a little bit of ultramarine blue into the red orange to suggest the shade, which gives more three dimension. Same as this full tomato here. For the uh, left hand side, it's in the shade. Some more little polishes with some tiny brush strokes. Even darker because I want to give more contrast. And just paint the stem here first with a light green, second layer a darker green. And that's it. Leave some tiny little shines there. And it's time to paint the shadows. I wet the shadow area with clear water first, so there's nice blending. I mix my own shadow color by mixing ultramarine blue and purple. The first layer is very watery. For the next layer, I paint around the edges because the areas close to the edges are much darker. Okay, so there's nice blending here for the shadows. Very interesting and lively. Okay, so here is my finished art journal spread. It's all done. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. If you have any questions, please just leave me a comment. And subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I will see you next time very soon.